Welcome back to Stitch Club on coatscrafts.co.uk. So we've learned to choose our needles and threads. We've learned our first ever stitch, which is called Straight Stitch. Now we're ready to make our first project. Are you ready? The first thing we're going to make is a really cool cushion. We've got lots of fabrics and lots of shapes to choose from. And we're going to make something gorgeous for our bedrooms. We're going to learn all about using simple patterns and cutting out shapes the best way to pin them to our fabrics, how to choose funky fabrics to great effect and how to sew them onto our cushion top and sew it all together and end up with a really cool cushion. Are you ready? Let's sew. I can't wait to make my own cushion. I like this one so much that I've decided that I'm going to do an ice cream shape as well. So I've chosen through my fabrics and I really like this polka dot and I'm going to use a biscuit colour for the wafer base of the ice cream. Um, so the first thing I've had to do is cut out the right pattern from my pattern pages. Now I used a different pair of scissors that were meant for paper for these because it's quite important when you have special nice sharp fabric scissors that you don't use them on paper as well because it can make them go a bit blunt. Um, so I've cut out my pattern pieces and the next thing I need to pin them to my fabric so that I can cut the shape out from the fabric. Now I've already started pinning my ice cream shape to the felt and as you can see I've got two pins so far. Now it's important to use the right amount of pins to make sure you do pin your shape all the way around. If I started trying to cut the way it is now I would not be doing very well cutting out the shape so I'm going to use plenty of pins all the way around the outside of my pattern. Now, with the pin, some people just press down and wonder why it's not staying. It's important that you push down through both layers and then bend slightly, bend both the fabric and the pattern slightly and push. And as you can see, it's gone all the way through. So pins in, bend and push. And I think we'll add one more at the end for good measure, just to be sure. Bend down, bend and push. And now I'm ready to cut out my shape. And when we're cutting out, it's really important that we don't cut any of the paper pattern away. We want to cut just on the edge all the way round. And then careful on the corner. And the same all the way back up. Cut, cut, cut. And I should find myself, when I carefully take out all my pins, Put them straight back in the pin cushion, never leave them lying around. Take away my pattern, part one, ready. And in a minute, I'm going to do the same again with my ice cream. So that's how to cut out a pattern. So we've used our pattern to cut out the shape needed for our ice cream. And the next thing to do is to pin them in place onto the top piece of felt for our cushion. I'm using a nice big red felt square. And I think I might use blue for the background. Not decided yet. So as you can see, I've pinned each piece of my ice cream in place and I'm just going to add an extra pin here to hold it on. And now I want to use stitches to sew it onto the cushion. So I'm going to use straight stitch like before and I'm going to use this nice green thick embroidery thread. And because it's already thick, I don't need to double it over, but I do need a knot at the far end. And I'm going to start by doing round the outline of the cone in green. So I remember I'm going to come up from underneath and I'm going to pull, 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 pull until I feel a tug on the knot and then I'm going to go down and pull it all the way. And what do we always do at the beginning and the end of each scene? We do a double stitch. So I'm going to come up again, pull the thread all the way and go down again. And now that I've started with my double stitch, I can keep sewing. Already that pin's kind of in the way. Pop it in the pin cushion and off we go. I'm going to go up and pull and down and pull. And because I want my cushion to look as nice as possible, I'm trying to make sure that the length of each stitch and the gap between each stitch is the same every time. And that will make it look nice and neat and tidy. Doesn't that look nice? And I'm going to keep sewing with straight stitch all the way round my cone until I get to here. Can you see the two buttons I'm holding here? 
This one has four holes and this one has two. Buttons come with either two or four holes, but the way we sew them on is fairly similar. Let's look at sewing on a four hole button, just like these ones. I think I'm going to put it here. I'm going to take my needle and thread and knowing where I want the button to be, I'm going to bring my needle up and out and pull all the way as before until we feel the knot. Now before we sew the actual button on, it's important that we do a couple of stitches to anchor the thread and make a solid base for the button. So watch what I do. I'm going to go down and up and bring my needle in and out a short distance away from each other and pull all the way until it looks really like a straight stitch. And I'm going to do that a second time. And I'm going to keep this stitch small enough that it will actually be hidden under the button when we sew the button on. Now I've done my couple of stitches, I'm ready to sew on the actual button. Now, I am going to use a nice cross effect with this button. With the two, four holes, we can either sew this way and this way to make a cross, or we can sew like two lines this way and this way. Let's look at how to do the cross effect. I'm going to bring my needle up through one hole and pull my thread all the way and then diagonally across because I want a nice cross effect. Push my needle down through that hole, pull, pull, pull and pull quite firmly so that it's in place and then the opposite cross I'm going to bring my needle up. I'm going to look underneath roughly to where I ended. Push my needle up through the next hole and pull, pull, pull all the way and then across diagonally down through this hole. And can you see we've made a nice cross? If this was on an item of clothing and I wanted it to be really, really secure, I would do the same again one more time. Do it over here and over here. But because this is for decoration, this should be enough. And again, just like with a straight stitch seam, at the beginning and at the end, we always do a double stitch. So I'm just going to flip over to the back and the same little double stitch I did at the beginning, down and up and pull. Oh, can you see I've got a little knot here? It's gone. Pull, pull, pull and then down and up. And you can see this is underneath the button so it shouldn't show. Pull, pull, pull. And that's fine. And just for extra safety, I'm going to do a little knot. And that's me. And I'll snip my thread. And that's me sewing on a button.